When I tell people I'm a gymnast, I sometimes hear the words, gymnastics isn't a sport. And while I could argue the opposite, the qualitative judgment of gymnast performances seems to be the basis for this conviction. With no objective measurement of goal scored, distance traveled, or time lapse, gymnasts are subjectively judged for the quality of their routines in that moment against textbook execution. Like diving, figure skating, all-star cheer, and others, it is a performance sport. Since my first competitive meet, I've grown a heightened understanding of the quality of the image I presented, down to the details. The position of my hands, pointed toes, and of course, a stuck landing. In particular, the balance beam has taught me the importance of image. Though I may feel nervous, to the judges I had to appear calm and fake it till I make it, keeping my shoulders back and chin lifted as if I was performing on the floor and not an apparatus only four inches wide. After all, it was that routine that mattered, not the countless ones I'd done in practice. But in order to hit this routine, every component needed to be executed well, fitting together like pieces of a puzzle. I know most of us swore we never used geometry outside of math class, but I beg to differ. Imagine the components of a beam routine. Acrobatic series, leap, jump, turn, dismount. But these pieces, perfectly shaped to complete the circle, are not an accurate representation of my actual abilities. Rather, even my best efforts may look like this, occasionally wavering off balance. Nonetheless, I needed to maintain that image of confidence, hiding and disguising any wobbles with improvised choreography. Pretending everything is going perfectly as planned is essential in these faltering moments to ensure the judges only saw your best. My awareness of the image I presented extended beyond gymnastics when I signed with a modeling agency during my sophomore year. Like gymnastics, modeling is qualitative and even more focused on image. It was the shot that mattered, not the hundreds of other images. Creating the perfect photo, in theory, could look like this. The lighting, hair and makeup, my pose and styling all captured in a precise moment, then fine-tuned later in post-production. But when I stepped off that set, that version of myself on camera seemed distant, almost unreal. However, the urge to portray the model off-duty, like Bella Hadid and many others did, remained ever near. Because who wouldn't want to appear effortlessly put together all the time? Though that routine and that photograph were small pieces of my image, I sought to broaden the scope of their perfected nature to other parts of my life, from test scores to my everyday appearance. In the end, it wasn't the hours spent studying that were being graded. The final number on the paper was the important one. And it wasn't the number of drafts that mattered, but the final talk that counted. And how many of you have ever said, I'm doing good, when good was only somewhere you wanted to be? My efforts to expand those refined parts of my life led to this illusionment. The emphasis placed on the final result disregarded the majority of my time spent as a work in progress. I soon realized this was perfectionism. The Oxford Dictionary defines perfectionism as the mindset claiming that perfection is attainable and should be attained. I'm sure you've all felt this to some extent, worrying about work, school, or other ambitions and goals. This mindset essentially created the dissonance between being and appearing, much like the phrase, fake it till you make it. In other words, putting on a facade of perfection, although it had yet to be attained. Fake it till you make it, in theory, could aid in achieving an elusive goal through emulating that success. But why fake it? Why hide the work in progress? Why strive to present the image of success prematurely? Competing, especially on beam, taught me to do this, to let the judges see a confident routine, even though I may not feel like it. Modeling instilled a similar mindset. After all, the final photo is what gets seen, not the behind-the-scenes moments. And while this makes sense in performative activities like these, real life isn't a performance. The final routine, resume, or photograph were only the tip of the iceberg, mere snapshots of the culmination of work done to create them. 
however appealing, striving to maintain that topmost image from start to finish was limiting. Because though I may have an idea of what my final goal was, there was no way to know if I truly made it. In striving to appear perfect, I limited myself to my own idea of the perfect end, the top of the pyramid. Fortunately, I learned other things from gymnastics, like flexibility, mentally and, of course, physically. I would love to demonstrate for you all right now, but these pants are a little limiting. Letting go of the rigidity and superficiality of appearing a certain way, whether on paper, in person, or online, allowed for the authentic experience of simply being. Being present just the way I was. Being okay with the steps forwards, the steps back, and maybe even sideways. Being patient with the process. Embracing this flexibility, I shifted my attention away from that expected goal and towards the current moment in the journey, wherever it may lead. Instead of focusing on emulating the final result, I focused on putting in the actual work, practices, notes, test shots, and appreciating their importance in enabling growth. In honoring the process, I found value in the authentic journey, the one with the unknown destination. Thank you.